Worlds 2023 and the International 12 have both started. The spectacle and excitement behind both tournaments is deserving of all of the hundreds of thousands of viewers they get each year, and I'm personally excited for this TI. It's taking place in Seattle, my home, my precious city of debauchery. Hey yo, what the fuck? But what professional Dota is missing is a guide for non-Dota players to enjoy watching a tournament for their first time. If you're a league player and are interested in watching some Dota 2 tournament games this fall, I'm here to help. Here is everything you need to know to watch Pro Dota as a League of Legends player. Join me as we take a look at a recent game between Shopify Rebellion and Team Spirit. Drafting in Dota is far more involved than anything you might see in League tournaments. Teams get more bans, and heroes have counters so powerful that a single spell from one guy can counter the entire kit of another. Thus, you'll see a lot more variety of heroes drafted from game to game and series to series. But don't be scared. If you're watching TI on Twitch, click around the screen during drafting or in gameplay to take advantage of the popular Twitch overlay extension. Here, you can read up on any abilities and items and see videos showcasing what's going on. Outside of that, listen closely to the analysts during the drafting phase as they will often point out synergies and counters as they get selected. The game starts and teams are already rushing mid and looking for a fight. In a few moments, big bags of gold will spawn for anyone to claim and it's not uncommon to see first blood happen before the lane minions, here known as creeps, even meet. The meta laning of Dota 2 sees both top and bottom having one core and one support heroes. The highest scaling core is called a carry and hangs out in the safe lane of their team, while the tanks and initiators prefer hanging out in the off lane. You'll also hear casters referring to positions with numbers between 1 and 5, designating their farm priority. Controlling a wave of creeps in Dota is a mix of aggro manipulation, denying, and pulling. This third method generally has supports aggroing some jungle creeps into the lane and forcing their own lane creeps to die in the jungle. Because of this, and due to the porous nature of the tree walls in the lanes, so portal combat is quite standard. Every couple of minutes, powerful buffs will spawn near the middle lane, and it's pretty common for a few supports to conveniently show up and contest this power. Like Jungler rotations dictate the pacing of games in League of Legends. Here in Dota, it's the supports that hold this aggressive initiative. Supports also like to glitch the jungle into spawning extra sets of creeps. We call this bug, I mean feature, stacking camps. In League, the early map objectives are Towers, Herald, and the Drakes. Dota's Tormentor miniboss and Roshan map boss aren't available or important for the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game. So instead, the objectives consist mostly of claiming map control and hunting priority targets. It's the heroes themselves that become key objectives. Roshan doesn't give a Baron buff when killed, but instead drops a one-time use Guardian Angel item called the Aegis of Immortality. With it, a team can fight what is essentially a 6 vs 5 engagement, 
as well as more safely push towers. This won't be pretty. Get ready, everybody. He's about to do something stupid. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Though the Aegis is a powerful tool, the pressure is on one player to make use of it well. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. There's nothing in Dota like the Herald or Dragon, and no jungle buffs that benefit the whole team. Instead, team-focused power comes from popular aura items, which some supports and tanks might pick up. With how auras stack from heroes, and with the early pickup of powerful utility items on supports, Expect to see more large-scale clashes than you would in League. In League, it's uncomfortable to group up for more than an objective fight, since it means the sacrifice of a lane of farm. In Dota, the power a coordinated team can output vastly overshadows the potential power gained from farming in non-stop. Of course, there's a delicate balance in there somewhere. Just know to expect a lot more skirmishing and team fights between teams in the international than those at Worlds. Items and builds play a crucial role in the mid and late game of Dota 2. Here are some items you should be on the lookout for. Black King Bar, or BKB, grants crowd control immunity and magic resistance. Just watch for this big yellow glow to see its tactic. Blink Tagger provides an out of combat flash. You can tell it's been used by the. NANI? Some support items include Glimmer Cape, Force Staff. and the Ghost Scepter. Invisibility is pretty common in Dota, but so are items to counter it, such as Sentry Wards, Dust of Appearance, and the Gem of True Sight. Okay, team fights are happening, but you still feel overwhelmed with all of the stuff on the screen. Instead of focusing on a single ability, think about the fights in a more broad manner. Like if a core gets stunned for a long time, or which team has the better vision. Dota's team fights follow a few common principles. 1. Engage range in Dota is massive. If someone's out of position, they may quickly die. 2. Supports often have the highest impact abilities on either team and tend to be very high priority targets at the start of any engagement. Teams will avoid the standard front-to-back line of scrimmage you're used to in league games and instead try to dissolve the fight into a rush for the supports or anything else fragile and out of position. Three, kiting the tank is often a viable strategy until everyone else is dead. In the late game, it's very common for the ADC to also double up as a tank. Hyper carries of Dota aren't those with high damage like in League, but are instead heroes with overwhelming damage over time. Tanky ADCs are always in fashion.
Okay, the teams have bought their items, killed Roshan, and are ready to push. This is called the high ground defense. Being on a lower map level makes it impossible to easily see anything waiting for you up above. Because of this, the breach of high ground is one of the hardest things a team can do in a game, and is often where the defenders can hold their last stand. A player just died, but by spending a thousand or so gold, they can instantly revive to join the team. This is called buying back, and has a long cooldown, so dying twice tends to be game losing as you get benched for a couple of minutes. Dota doesn't have Akshan, but this is a close replacement. Inhibs in Dota, called Barracks, or Racks for short, never respawn, but otherwise serve the same purpose. Destroy them, and your creeps get permanently stronger for the rest of the game. Level all three lanes, and your creeps get 100 attack damage and 1000 HP. Mega creeps can slaughter most underfarmed heroes. It's rare, but a glorious feat for a team to win against mega creeps. Looks like a team defended well, and there is a chance for a counter attack. In Dota, there aren't any catch up objective bounties. Rubber band mechanics are instead built into the kill bounties, which take into account the net worth difference of both teams and the net worth of the winning team. Comebacks are a lot more common in Dota than in League. Since item scaling is usually an indirect buff to your hero power, as opposed to a direct damage buff to abilities like in League, there is always a chance for a team to take the game back. It's never over until an ancient explodes or a team types good game or GG in all chat. This is Dota's forfeit mechanic and is pretty standard in professional games. It's actually really common to see games end before teams ever do damage to the core of your base. And so, one game ends and another begins. Dota and League are both amazing games, and I'm pretty happy that players of each have given me this much support. 4,000 subs. Just wow. If you want to learn to not only watch Dota games, but play them as well, check out the Discord server. The server sometimes hosts educational stuff like live streams and watch parties. And uh, watch my other stuff too? Thanks. Bye.